Okay, folks, I got the electrical restoration uh, about 99% complete on the Emerson AX212. A look underneath, close up, um, really tight chassis, so hard to make, extremely uh, neat. I did my best. A couple temporary parts I got in here. This is where I had a 15 meg resistor open, and you see I've got just a couple uh, quarter watt resistors in series there to equal close to uh, 15 meg until I can uh, source that. I left this uh, mica mold in. I said I would replace it but looking at the value on the schematic it's uh, 220 picofarads and uh, back in the 40s when mica mold started uh, reproducing their mica capacitors or started using paper molded capacitors Everything above, I think, 1,000 uh, picofarads were uh, paper. So I'm going to take a chance that uh, this is good. It tests good on my uh, meter. So uh, we'll fire it up and uh, make sure it works. Um, the others are not uh, Mica Mold brand, so I left the other uh, caps in that are uh, picofarad in value that uh, should be Mica. Tested those as well in circuit, and they test well. Did some other uh, preliminary checks on the uh, output transformer and it looked good, the on off switch. You can see I've got a line cord uh, just uh, temped in at this point in time. I uh, did throw a safety cap in as well. And then to take care of the uh, heater string, I used the uh, diode and uh, power resistor and uh, I'll show that here in just a moment. Uh, the two electrolytics here back where the originals were placed and uh, the common ground back to the chassis. So uh, pretty straightforward, just uh, extremely uh, tight and a little tedious and time consuming. Again, all this will be cleaned up here, the line cord. You can see where I've just got that uh, soldered in here where I can just uh, pull this off when I uh, put a permanent uh, line cord in the uh, radio. Let me uh, flip this over real quick and I'll show you guys where I hid the uh, power resistor and uh, diode. As you can see here, there was really no room underneath to uh, do so. If you guys uh, go back and look at the uh, little cadet radio that I just completed, I'm using the same voltage dropping uh, scheme that I used on it and uh, the tube complement here being the same uh, as far as the voltage drop on the heater string uh, I actually used a, a 35 ohm power resistor here as well and the diode you can see is placed uh, down here uh, tucked in and it's right underneath on the top side here of the uh, tuning condenser and uh, it just clears um, here on this back section uh, which works uh, great for um, placing that here. Now at this point in time it's just laying up against the uh, back plane. I'll use some Arctic Silver. You can see in the picture in picture. Uh, place a little small amount here on the back of that and clamp this in place. I don't want to use too much. I want it to be able to be broke loose should this uh, power resistor fail in the future. And then I'll go put some liquid tape over this area right here just to make sure if it ever does come loose or somebody puts their hands in here for some reason that uh, that doesn't uh, create an issue here. So that's where I was able to uh, kind of tuck that away. Now. I did use a, a Zener diode again. Again, the diodes uh, face each other, and it's across the uh, dial lamp as well, just so when we get that uh, high voltage spike on turn up at full voltage, I don't uh, exceed the rating of the uh, lamp, and I think this was a Type 44. So I've got uh, two resistors here in uh, parallel to get the uh, correct resistance here. And I'll put a little note here at the bottom of the video. In um, the Zener diode, and you can see it's just tucked away here with some heat shriek on it and uh, mounted back 
in this location. Other than that, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Did all the tube tests and uh, everything uh, looks good. We're ready to uh, power this up here and uh, see what happens. All right, let me get a uh, temporary antenna here hooked back up to the antenna coil. And slide this back this way and get my multimeter over here where we can keep an eye on the B plus voltage when we bring this up. And you can see the uh, dial lamp, well, possibly if it shows up here. And the camera with the lights already lit just a little. And uh, let me go ahead and bring up the uh, voltage here ever so slowly on the Variac and keep an eye on the amperage as well. I would expect this radio to uh, draw somewhere around uh, 0.3 to 0.4 amps of uh, current. I'll leave it there just for a moment. I'm at uh, 53 volts here on the uh, Variac and uh, 0.17 amps of current. And uh, not much happening here, the voltage being that low, the rectifier itself with the uh, heater voltage being that low is uh, just now starting to uh, actually uh, work. You can see the voltage starting to uh, ramp up a bit here. Let me go ahead and bring it back up to about 75 volts here and see what we've got. I'm just under 75 volts in uh, 0.18 amps of current. And uh, now we can see the uh, DC voltage here on the B-plus side start to ramp up. Just want to make sure I've got the uh, volume turned up here on the uh, receiver. And uh, we can actually hear some noise now. Yeah, it looks like another day of uh, thunderstorms here. You can hear the uh, thunderstorm watches or warnings coming out. And uh, pretty amazing, really, this thing is playing. And uh, you can hear a little electrical noise from the storms here in the background. Only the uh, B-plus at 52 volts, and the uh, radio is actually uh, playing pretty well on a low B-plus. Audio is going to be distorted, of course, because I've got the uh, cardboard over the top of the speaker still. All right, let me go ahead and uh, bring the voltage up a little higher here. Okay, I'm about a hundred volts, and uh, you can see my B plus here, 106.
Sunday night services at six. It's about wolves in sheep's clothing, about those who are in That game, we have six teams from our state participating in the Olympics. All right, a very good sign here. Still about uh, 0.27 amps of current and um, just a little north of 100 volts AC. Let me go ahead and bring this thing up to 120 volts here. Okay, I'm about uh, 0.32 amps of current, so uh, I thought we'd be somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4, so that's uh, pretty close. Let me show you guys how the uh, dial lamp reacts here. I'm going to turn the uh, Variac off and uh, leave it set for full voltage, 120 volts, and uh, you can look at the dial lamp when I uh, power the radio up with the uh, Zener diode in place and uh, see what I'm talking about as far as how it limits that uh, inrush voltage that uh, sometimes has the potential on these older sets like this to uh, blow out the uh, dial lamp. So uh, using the uh, Zener diode and it provides some additional protection here. Let me readjust my uh, camera angle so you guys can see the dial lamp uh, and turn the radio off for a couple minutes and we'll flip it back on here. Keep an eye here on the uh, dial lamp right down here in this area. And you can see when it came on, again, we're using the uh, Zener as a voltage regulator. And uh, we don't get that big spike here where we see the light, uh, you know, just flash really bright. And you can see our B plus ramp back up here. So folks, uh, thanks for watching. Just a quick power up. Again, I'll go back and tidy up the electrical cord when I get my uh, authentic replacement. Stick in the uh, correct 15 meg resistor over here as well. Get these out. And uh, just a little other tweaking here on the chassis with some rust removal. And of course get the cardboard off here and then we'll focus our attention on the cabinet uh, next when the weather allows me to do so. You guys uh, take care and thanks again for watching.